Okay, I think we'll we'll get started here. Um, welcome everybody again to the um, third installment of the fall uh, webinar series from Proven Winners. Uh, we're very excited uh, to join all of you today and, and um, have you be a part of this webinar. My name is Heather Pori and I am the Retail Account Manager uh, for Proven Winners for the Eastern Seaboard. And I work alongside Jessica DeGraff as the Retail Account Manager for the Eastern Seaboard. Today, we're, we're gonna talk about some great annuals, um, some rock star must-haves um, in the Proven Winners lineup uh, to help turn and burn those retail spaces um, and benches for next spring. Um, I have Kevin Hurd today as the guest speaker, um, and he is Vice President of Product Management for Proven Winners. But before I turn it over to Kevin, I want to just go over a few housekeeping items. So we want to make sure that you're heard. So all, all attendees, um, you'll, you'll be in listed mode only. However, we, again, would love to communicate and we love the interaction and, and conversation. So please um, click the chat button or the Q&A icon below um, and submit your questions and we can, we can answer them after Kevin's talk. So... As I said, um, uh, we have Kevin Hurd today, um, who's going to be presenting um, the must-have annuals through the Proven Winners lineup. Um, Kevin, John Gatos uh, was the first uh, original Proven Winners employee, um, and he was responsible for bringing much of those Proven Winners annuals that we have loved and adored all throughout these years. And, and today, Kevin has stepped in, and he's going to be talking about the must-haves for 2023. So uh, please welcome Kevin Hurd um, to share those must-haves. All right, let's share my screen. And do you see that, Heather? Yes. All right. All right, everyone, as Heather said, I am Kevin Hurd. I am the Vice President of Product Development. And I'm gonna go through um, not just the must-haves, but actually all of the 22, 23 new arrivals. So we do have um, a must-have uh, subset of annuals. So we started doing the must-haves maybe five or six years ago. We get that a lot of the breeders out are, are releasing a lot of new items. And so what we wanted to do is curate a small subset of, of every new, um, uh, new variety uh, introductions class to items that we think are gonna be top sellers or something extremely unique to the Proven Winners line. And just to make sure that if you don't walk away with anything, you do walk away with, okay, those, these this short list of must-haves, these need to be on my order. Uh, you know, as soon as we get off of this presentation, I expect you all to run and, and make sure that they're all on your order forms with your, you know, your broker of choice or your propagator of choice. We're gonna go through those first because I, I want them nice and, uh, I wanna present those to everyone when we're nice and fresh. And then we'll transition into that alphabetical uh, alphabetical of, of the other items that we have for the new annuals, uh, proven harvest and proven accents. And um, yeah, ask any questions away. Obviously, we've got a new variety video with these varieties that has been released up for a while now. So I'm, it's kind of be a little bit of a review, probably for most of you. Um, so yeah, we're happy to answer any questions and, and hopefully uh, it's kind of just a review for so jumping right into it, our first must-have is Superbell's Prism Pink Lemonade. This is a color-changing pattern that starts with a nice yellow in the spring and then transitions to a vibrant pink throughout the season as, as the UV intenses, intensifies. Obviously, there are a few other items out there with this color pattern. Um, we have been uh, looking for one for a long time, but you know the bar is a little bit higher with proven winners and needing that season long performance and and to fit that Super Bell's name. And so we finally found one with that color pattern and that performance in the same package. Uh, this is a facultative long day plant, so it flowers fastest under 13, but it still flowers under 10, 11, and 12 our photo periods. That's a little bit later than what we normally shoot for. We, we try to look for something that flowers under uh, faster under 12 and 13, but still under 10 and 11. So just a little bit on, on the later side from what we normally look for, but still going to be gorgeous at, your, on, at the retail bench on Mother's Day or Mother's Day, whatever fits your, your marketplace. 
obviously all of our super bells we, we screen them for the opposites resistance so you'll hear me say that um this variety and almost all super bells they work really well in that grande performance or that grande throw container at retail but also monos and we're going to have recipe kits uh, which are going to have uh, mixes with other varieties a lot of items that are vigor three vigor two and vigor one so normally and when you see the vigor what happens is we we categorize all of the items in into different vigors super bells are all vigor two and they eat uh, anything will mix with a vigor higher or a vigor lower than them in our, in our menu. Next, we have two new climbing Ipomea in our Sweet Caroline Upside series. These are really, really well branched climbing binding Ipomea. Um, there are other uh, climbing binding Ipomea on the market, but what we did is we looked for really densely and really well branched varieties so that when they do climb up onto, say, a fence or on, on, onto a trellis, you're not going to be able to see through it like some of the other varieties. So uh, uh, key lime is obviously our chartreuse lime um, color. And then also we have a chocolate uh, or black in black coffee. Uh, and so they both mix very well to each, with each other. Um, you, you'll see that in a few photos that I'll show you as well. Um, what we are is we're, we're recommending um, planting these in a Royale. So that's our version of um, a cater gallon with a trellis. So that trellis will help signify uh, signal to the consumer that this is a climbing climbing Ipomea so that uh, because this is it's, you know a fairly novel item within the Ipomea class and so then and it also gives them a nice little start so then when they do plant it into a larger container it's already got a little bit of elevation and they can easily wrap it onto whatever they're going to put it around. So here is out in some trials in North Carolina North Carolina. So this is out in a field, just hog panel, um, and just uh, and let the the plants grow up there naturally with no training at all. You can see the leading climbing Ipomea on the left on how bony it is versus upside black coffee with that really dense and very thick growth. Here it is from uh, one of our proven winners employees. Uh, they got these plants last summer already to trial, and I got a ton of photos from all of the proven winners employees just raving at how great that this, this plant was. So he, he chose to mix two of them together with um, an obelisk uh, trellis. And you can see this is already just early season, and it was doing really, really well for him in the Midwest. Next, we have a romance mulberry Nemesia. So Nemesia traditionally are cooler season, um, kind of like Lobelia, Osteo, Diacea type of things. With a romance, what we're doing is we're retooling it. We've seen cool season crops really kind of winnow away on sales. Uh, when you can have something like a Super Bells or a Super Tunia that you can grow cooler, and still have that season long performance. I, what we feel is that people are just moving away from these cool season only crops in a lot of cases. So trying to get more bang for your buck on that retail bench. So what we're doing is re, we've retooled the Nemesia. We're, we're screening these uh, Nemesias through our Florida trial and making sure that they can survive through it. And so this is one of our must haves. Of course, it, it is a Nemesia. So in that early season, it will have that very fragrant uh, Nemesia smell. So it's really intoxicating when it's on the retail bench for the consumer, but it's going to persist through the, throughout the season. And so I got a lot of feedback. Uh, a couple of our folks that live in Florida, um, they were just in love with how well it did in their Florida um, containers this summer. So continuing to expand that a romance Nemesia collection with Mulberry. And then here it is a nice little shot. This is in August in one of our trials. So still tons of flower colors. You can see big, big baskets of petunias in the background. And um, yeah, you, you, you're, the days of just that early spring flowering on an amnesia are over. Next, we have three new colors of the Mini Vista yellow, uh, of, of our Super Tunia Mini Vista collection. So Mini Vistas are, um, they're they're known for their ease of growth their perfect presentations in a grande and a royale they also make really nice monos they make great mixes especially with other mini vistas 
And then also they are just bulletproof landscape varieties as well too. So, you know, obviously Vistas and Vista Bubblegum, they're a hallmark of the Proven Winners line. We look at the mini Vistas as being a, a small flowered, more compact version of the Vista Petunia. So not everybody has the space for a Vista, but everybody wants that season long and that great impact of a, of a Vista. So if you don't have that huge space for like a Vista Bubblegum, a mini Vista is a perfect variety for you. They're also a lot, uh, a little bit easier to grow in the small containers because they are so well branched, and so they just make really nice grandes, very nice royals as well. So we're excited. Um, you know, all of the, the breeding companies they've come out with great yellow petunias over the last couple of years, um, and so we're excited to join the fray with them. But we really feel like we have the best performing yellow variety on the market with Mini Vista. Yellow. So uh, again, you've heard me say this, this is a facultative long day flowering fastest under 13 hours, but still flowers under 10, 11, and 12 hours well too. And all of the mini vistas that are in the must have are in the same category. So uh, here's an, an, an example from our trials. This is three plants in a 12 inch um, planted up in week 30 uh, in, in 2021. So this is a 12 week old ba basket uh, grown in the summertime through our trials. So you can really see just a picture perfect item. This is no pinch, no PGRs. We don't do any of that in our trials. So you can really see just this all natural uh, on how well this really looks. Here, this is in our Florida trial. Sorry for uh, the, uh, the flowers are a little bit droopy because this is early in the morning in Florida. We always get to the trials as soon as the sun rises because it gets so hot. And so we use our Florida trials for two things. We plant uh, right about now this time of year. And that's what this plant was. This was planted in the fall of 2021 and then overwintered outside in Florida with no protection so that we screen for cold tolerance. So uh, I do recommend that you grow any yellow petunia a little bit warmer than you would normally grow petunias because uh, yellow pigmented petunias are a little bit more sensitive to cold. Uh, Mini Vista yellow is in that same realm. It is a uh, yellow petunia, but it did survive outside with zero protection in a Florida, in a Florida winter, in northern Florida winter. So it definitely went through a frost. And this was in uh, when we came and visited in May. So it had overwintered all year, and that was what it was looking like when we, we came to this. This is, a, this is in August in our internal trials. So the reason I'm showing you these, this ugly field is because this is a very low wet area. Uh, it kills a lot of petunias that don't like wet feet. It's definitely clay as well too. But uh, to our surprise, we had one plant that was absolutely just a standout and that was Mini Vista Yellow. It just survived anything that we threw at it and this was kind of the start of like we've got something special like i think we're going to look back in five years and we're going to realize that mini vista yellow is as as special as just a bubble gum it really is that great of a performer and we're really really excited and the fact that it's a yellow petunia is even better because uh, they can have issues uh and none of that problem with this with mini vista yellow Next is another new novel color, which is Dupertunia Mini Vista Midnight. This is a deep, deep plum to almost black. Uh, this is looking more purple in this photo, but uh, in person it does look to be almost a black color. Um, uh, really, you know, you get all of the attributes of the Mini Vista just with this novel really deep plum black. It is also, as I had mentioned before, a faculty of long day flowering faster under 13 hours, but still flowering under 10, 11, and 12 hours for the periods. And then finally, for the Super Junior Mini Vistas uh, expansions, we've got a new Scarlet. Reds and Scarlets are notoriously difficult to get good performance out of. And, and so we're really happy to even have gotten to a Scarlet. We are looking for a true red, of course. Uh, eventually, but this is a nice stepping stone to get there. Um, and what, what's great is you have this mini Vista chassis, but then now you, you can use the Scarlet for more patriotic themes. So, you know, red and uh, mini Vista white up in Canada and the mini Vista Scarlet, mini Vista Indigo or mini Vista Midnight and mini Vista white or red, white, and blue recipe for Memorial or Fourth of July. And then finally, just reiterating it again, this is a facultative long day flowering uh, best under 13 hours, but still will flower under 10, 11, and 14 periods. 
So that's it with the must haves. Uh, now we're going to move on to the regular annuals, uh, going mostly or going alphabetically uh, within the annuals, and then we'll we'll and then we'll go to the other categories as well. So we have our surefire of uh, line of begonias, and we're adding two new colors to them uh, for 2023. And it's surefire white, which we were missing. So large flowering uh, plants on vigorous uh, upright chassis. You know, the surefires are bulletproof. They take heat and humidity. They they take, sun, they take uh, shade, they grow even better in the full sun with more being more floriferous. They also are very self-clean, so you don't get botrytis on the flowers like on some begonias can get. Um, and then you get this very vigorous mounded landscape plant. And then also we have surefire cherry cordial. So this is the darkest leaf version that we have almost a black but very deep chocolate really sets off that red flower color on top of it um and that brings the total of uh of four varieties in the surefire line so you have surefire rose which has got some bronze foliage surefire red which is a red on green foliage and then surefire white which is white on green foliage and surefire cherry cordial which is red on the deep chocolate and black foliage so slightly different habits in them but all over but in general, uh, very similar um, look in the landscape. So large mounded with tons of flowers, uh, and just smothering the plants. And then we have an improvement on one of our core colors. So uh, Super Bell's Yellow improved for 2023. So the old Super Bell's Yellow was a fantastic plant. So the improvement on this one is really more of an internal improvement. So our old our old variety, we had some issues with uh, getting it to root. They would, the cuttings would come in budded, look uh, very chlorotic. And so it took a lot of effort on the propagator side to really get that nice looking liner out to our customers. So we're improving it just to help with our supply chain. Um, obviously we're known for our reliability from our propagators and uh, fixing this on this plant just helps us continue that reliability that you all would expect. So uh, the, I guess the consumer performance is slightly better, but the old one was really an awesome variety. Really, once you got it into, uh, once the customer got it, there was no issues with it, but just improving that on an internal side, maybe with some slight improvement on that consumer performance. Still overall very good, just like the old Super Bowl's yellow. The new Super Bowl's yellow is very early, so it's daily neutral flowering, um, equally as fast under 10, 11, 12, and 13 hours. And then another yellow super bells that we have, we have a double yellow version. Uh, so this has got, you know, uh, just a mass of double yellow flowers. They kind of look like double yellow mini roses. We have a whole line of double super bells. Uh, we're really uh, excited about them. So we have a collaboration in, in, in the United States with Select Ball. And uh, Ball Selecta and Proven Winners are the only two companies that are able to sell uh, double Super Bells because of uh, an agreement that we have with the Selecta uh, Corporation. And so we're just continuing on that expansion of these doubles and the novelties, and then also some of the core colors as well. Uh, one thing about doubles is that they are a little bit later to flower. That's very typical for a lot of double uh, flowering varieties and, and double in this double Super Bell. Yellow is no different. So it is an obligate long day, uh, which is a little bit later than what we like to introduce, but it's such a great plant that we, we move forward with it. But it flowers best under 13, 12, and 11 hours, or it needs 11, 12, and 13 hours. Next is a whole new uh, line or a whole new habit of any basket uh, lantana. We've never had one. Uh, in this habit before. And so this is Luscious Basket Angelo. So you can see nice, nice bright orange to yellow. In the in the summer, it looked more monotone. Uh, I will show you like that. So more of like a, a softer orange that's that's solid. That's that's what the, the consumer will see. Uh, you know, obviously having a hanging basket lantana that opens up more and more possibility for more bulletproof uh, hanging basket varieties that can Take the heat in and humidity and a little bit more drought in that summertime, especially in the southern areas. 
uh, all of our luscious. Um, we screen them for low to no seed set. So we've got, uh, we'll do a, an initial screen in our greenhouse. And if it sets any, any seed inside the greenhouse, it's kicked out. And then uh, once it's outside around a lot of other lantana that we're, tr we're trialing, we'll, we'll be a little forgiving. If there's one or two seed pods on them, that can happen. Uh, if it's anything more than that, then it's gone. We've thrown away some really gorgeous lantana just because of the amount of seed stuff that they've done. A, we want to be, we don't want to put anything that's invasive out there. And then also anything that sets a, a fair amount of seed that can slow down flower power too. So we want to we want to avoid that. And so we we specifically select for low seed set. So uh and luscious royale lemon tart is a perfect example of that. Again, very, very low seed set. So uh, we've got two main lines. We've got the luscious line, which is our larger, more vigorous line, perfect for the north and, and for the landscape for big and old looking landscapes. And then we have uh, the Royales, which are really well branched, very tight, mounded um, lantanas. And what uh, Luscious Royale Lemon Tart does is it replaces Luscious Banana Rama. Banana Rama did have a very tight habit, but it was taller and kind of was an outlier. It didn't fit into either the Luscious or the, the Luscious Royale. So this helps uh, really divide the two series and keep that clear separation. So you can see banana ram on the left, you know, just very well branched, but just bigger and taller and versus the more compact one. And then uh, moving on to lobelia. Again, a lobelia is one of those traditional cool season crops. We are taking a new tact at that. We are, um, our main lobelia breeder is now actually based in Texas. So breeding lobelias in Texas, screening them through those Texas summers and looking for the items that are going to persist deeper into the summer across the US. So this is, replaces the old compact blue with eye, which is our only really compact uh, one in the line. So it's a little bit unique, great for grande, uh, that grande early season high density growing. Uh, obviously, it has this really beautiful bright blue flower, large bright blue flower with a white eye. So it's really a stunning plant on the retail bench. And then another traditional cool season crop. This is probably one of our prototypes where we, we knew that we could really change a genera by just screening harder. And so we introduced the first bright lights five or six years ago. Uh, we continue to expand on it. We we just trial osteos just like we would trial a petunia or trial a, a calvercoa. We plant it. It's got to it's got to continue flowering all through the season in our trials, and that's what, exactly what we have. And now with the bright lights horizon, this is our first hanging basket variety. So you've got this, uh, you've got um, a traditional daisy look, but you have these really cool uh, orange colors in that cooler uh, in that hotter tone. And then with the cooler lavender to kind of balance it. So between those two color uh, mixes, there's going to be a lot of items. We're going to have a lot of kits with this variety. Um, you know, you can see that we've already been playing around with it, mixing it with some super bells, mi mixing it with Nemesia, Lobelia. Um, and, and so we'll have a lot of kits for this variety. And then uh, another new supertunia. This is probably one of the most vigorous supertunias that we've introduced. It's uh, it's a coral and yellow bicolor uh, novel flower color. It uh, it fits closer to some of the items that we have trailing. So anything that you want with this bright, uh, really uh, hot color, but in something that has more drama to it. So you can see our supertunia blue veined on the left with. That's probably the most trailing variety that we have in our line. And then you have persimmon. So anything that you need really dramatic, long hanging baskets, this is a perfect item for that orange coral uh, color uh, scheme. It is uh, a facultative long day. That's kind of almost the, the theme of any of the supers that we, in, we released for 2023. So flowering fastest under 13, but still flowering uh, under the 10, 11, and 12 hour. And then we have a whole brand new class of coleus. This is our first of the uh, Color Blaze Mini Me. So this is Mini Me Watermelon. Um, what I love about this is this is a no brainer. It's a no pinch, no PGR. And you, you stick the liner into the grande or into whatever, and it just goes. 
um, really nice feather foliage. And then it, it, it starts burgundy and then transitions into a watermelon red foliage color. Um, all of our color glaze, we select for very, very late flowering. So like we do our final evaluations in late August and anything that has more than a bud or two, we're talking just budded up, it's completely kicked out of our color glaze. So we're, we feel like by having that late flowering, it helps the, the plants keep their, their form and their shape better to, for the consumer. It also keeps them better branched. And also um, by not flowering or flowering later, it helps prevent uh, downy mildew setting in as well too. So nobody wants downy mildew on their, their coleus because the leaves start to drop, it looks unsightly and they start to look really bare. Um, and obviously that's not great for those. So here you, you can see a nice, really a great example of, of, the, of the example that we picked in our trials in 2020. So again, yeah, great for uh, small, high density grande production. Uh, that's exactly what it is. And then we have, um, it's, it's the new benchmark for our Mojave collection. So uh, the biggest downfall of Portulaca is a lot of times their flowers are closed um, at erratic times. And especially um, when, when folks would be at their house to enjoy it. So in the morning or in the afternoon, a lot of times, a lot of uh, Portulaca will be closed. So this variety is open earlier and stays open later. And we're looking to really match this for the entire Mojave line. So much, uh, this did really, really well in trials, so much so that I just got an inquiry uh, to be written up about this variety because uh, folks really noticed its great performance throughout all of the public trials we, we had for 2022. And then several years ago, we introduced an upgrade on a Gornitica hybrid of salvia. So the original one that was released on the market with Amistad, uh, which is a great variety, but it is big and beastly. It, um, it's, it's big, it flops over in the landscape for the consumer and for the grower, it makes it very difficult to grow a nice looking small pot. So we introduced a compact version of it called Deep Purple several years ago, which was definitely more reined in than Amistad, but then we, we wanted to match our uh, uh, rock and fuchsia, which is really our benchmark variety. So with the, the improvement on deep purple, you get um, an even more tamed plant for uh, easier for production in, um, in containers, but then also easier for the consumer to grow as well too, less prone to flopping over. So you still have that same amount of flower color, but just on a smaller chassis in, in deep purple. And, and with that with that smaller chassis, it obviously makes it a lot easier to grow in a grande. Uh, rock and fuchsia, you can grow in a grande, no problem. The old deep purple with a little bit of a challenge to, to get into that small size definitely was better suited for a Royale or a gallon size. But with the new one, much easier to grow that small, that, that quintessential quart or grande size. And that's it for the, the, the annual side of it. And so now we're going to switch into the proven accents. So for those of you who don't know what proven accents are, that's just a nicely curated collection of items that you know, typically don't flower, but are being mixed with proven winners. So we've, we've bundled them all together and you know are branding it proven accents. Um, and, and by doing that, it adds more focus. They're, we're able to incorporate the or incorporate any proven accents into our national recipe um, trial so that we've got uh, more options to play with. And then also at your retail, what you'll be able to do is you can merchandise your proven accents next to your proven winners. So it gives people more inspiration, can choose them out, you know, hold them up to each other, compare them and start building their own recipes with them. So the first one is Illusion Penny Lace. So Penny Lace is going to uh, replace Garnet Lace, which was uh, a very older variety. The color was very drab. Uh, and so we wanted to upgrade that to, to be this deeper, um, much better red color uh, and bronze color. So very highly dissected, great 
uh, mixes really well, but then also is a, is a nice a texture item for recipes, but then also in the landscape as well. Next is Waikiki Sunset. This is an, uh, an old, old variety. We've had this in our proven selections uh, line for many, many years. Uh, it's, it obviously has bright uh, chartreuse and green uh, variegated foliage. It, what I really like about it is it's a great spiller, especially in the shade. So, you know, everyone's always looking for more and more items for the shade. People have front porches, they have backyards. Uh, and so this is one of our favorites items for in that in that shade to mix with. And then we have big leaf creeping wire vine Mulembechia. Obviously, there's the small leaf version. We felt for proven winners, we wanted the big leaf, a uh, little bit more vigor um, to, to be able to mix with super petunias, super venus, super bells, et cetera. So we, we, we focused in on the big leaf version of this for proven accents. So it makes a great thriller, but then also climbs a little bit with it um, and it mixes with all of the, you know, all of the typical super figures. And then in that same vein, you've got Swedish ivy plectranthus, so a variegated version of it, very vigorous, able to keep up with, you know, even your vista petunia type of thing. So adding adding to more uh, tools in your toolbox of creating recipes for your consumers. And then finally, we've got a, a Purple Queen Fratiscantia, obviously a staple in the market, especially where I'm located in Austin, Texas. Uh, you see this planted all over as a drought tolerant um, um, brown cover. Um, you know, it doesn't flower very much, and the flowers are pink, so almost nondescript on that purple foliage. But you know, adding to more more and more items that you can you can make your proven winners in in recipes. And then in that same vein of proven accents, we did proven we did grateful grasses many many years ago. So again, it's, this is a curated collection of items that we feel are great performers and 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 create um, a complete look with other proven winners. So the first one is that we've upgraded a chorus, our Ogon a chorus, into the graceful grasses we've been selling it for years and proven in selections. So just adding more and more focus to it by elevating it to be a proven winners, uh, you know, nice thriller element uh, with that very good foliage. Uh, and then we're keep on expanding our tots. So we've got King Tot, which is the most vigorous, the, the tallest, uh, really the, the, the most dramatic of all of them. Then there's Queen Tot, or sorry, there's, uh, there's Prince Tot, which is like the almost the perfect size, uh, uh, really like one point. Uh, a, a meter and a half or a yard and a half tall uh, with really well branched. And then we have baby tut, which is the most compact one. Queen tut slides right in between prints and baby tut. It's got a different look than the other ones. It's got much smaller umbels and really well branched. I really like it um, and putting it into a little bit wetter areas in your garden to help take up that moisture. And then you, you give you a nice dramatic look for it. Also makes great uh, a great item for cut uh, foliage as well. And then finally, we've got graceful grasses curly whirly. So adding another uh, curly juncus to the line. It's just a nice fun thriller item that you can mix with, uh, and also works well in in also wet areas of your food. Okay, and then the, the final category is Proven Harvest. So Proven Harvest is fairly new for us, just a couple of years old, uh, and we continue to expand that. We've got a sweet pepper called Pepper Pot Sweet Sugar. It's a really nice snacker. To, uh, has a yellow to orange, uh, just really bite-sized fruit on a nice chassis, uh, very disease resistant. So it offers high resistance to TMB, TOMB, and PV rate zero. Uh, 66 days from transplanting outdoors to mature fruit. Uh, like I said, it has sweet flavor with, with no heat. It's we, we actually tested it for Scoville because that's part of our procedure. It was under 40, they just said under 40, so almost undetectable for any heat. And then we have an upgrade for my favorite variety uh, of tomato, which is Garden Treasure. This is our medium to large slicer. Uh, it has a great balance of acid and sweetness. 
in a really, really nice texture to it. So it's not mealy, nice and smooth. I love slicing it up, put it on burgers, put it on for BLTs, or you can even chop it up and put it into a salad. Um, it's just absolutely my favorite tomato in the world. So it's a nice little upgrade. So the improvement is that it has late flight resistance. And I got to see this uh, live in action this summer. I planted both the old variety and the new variety. And I'd never struggled with late flight on the old variety, but this year there was uh, a lot of late flight in my area. And so having the two of them planted side by side in my garden, it was definitely eye opening to see how well this disease package works because I didn't get to harvest anything off of the old variety, um, and, but the new variety just powered right through it, continued. Uh, continued to produce fruit deep into the summertime for me and uh, got to see that disease package uh, really live in action. Then we have um, a cocktail size of our tomato. This is uh, an indeterminate, so it does get pretty tall. It produces fruit all season long and, uh, and just really nice bite size, like almost a ping pong size of it. Um, maybe, it, I, I guess, you know, I would call it a chew biter, you know, not quite one that you're like a cocktail that you can just throw it in there. It, it, you're, you do, you're, you may choke on it a little bit. So definitely take, it takes two bites to, to finish this. Uh, also works well in salads, chop it in, you know, quarter it up, throw it into a salad or, you know, just snacking it, um, at, you know, at a party or whatever with your friends. You know, all of our, all of our tomatoes, we run through a tasting panel. So uh, we really feel like we've curated a really nice selection of tomatoes that are, that, that fit, that, that taste palettes of all sorts of folks. So, you know, obviously that's, it's a subjective thing on taste. But we we run it through a diverse palette of of folks to to really curate what we feel are the best tasting tomatoes in the market. And then finally, we've got uh, tempting tomatoes patio sunshine. So this is a really compact, determinate variety. A lot of these compact varieties they don't have good flavor, and so with good hearted and with uh, patio sunshine, we think that we have two of the best tasting compact varieties. That dwarf gene in that tomatoes can really uh, give a very bitter off taste to the, the fruit. And so it takes a lot of breeding to be able to breed around that. And so uh, we have that with the tempting tomatoes. Uh, with it being determinate, there is that fruit set and all that fruit load very early in the season. We, you know, it produces 100 plus bright yellow, um, you know, less than one inch or one inch round tomatoes. Um, it, and it just, it, it, that's kind of yield almost, I mean, one plant and that's about all you're going to need for your family. And then it's very, like, I, I think I was saying it was very early. So, you know, seed germinates in seven to 20 days and the fruit ripens in a quick 45 days. In the so definitely one of our earliest tomatoes and the tempting tomatoes to find. And then the final plant that I have for 2023 is it's a this is an old heirloom variety. This is Dragon Tongue Fasciolus bean, and uh, it's a right really nice bush bean. It has these bright purple streaked beans uh, on two to three foot uh, plants. They can be picked young and eaten, which is the way I enjoy them. But they also can be left on to the plant and shelled. And then the beans also have that nice purple striations to them as well too. So very easy to grow direct. So right into a grande size container and 55 to 60 days uh, from, from sowed harvest. And that's it. Did we get any questions, Heather? Hey, Kevin, you know, you got me hungry. I'm talking about all those tempting tomatoes varieties. I know. Oh, they're so good. Yum. I cannot wait to plant them again. Yeah, yeah. So the slicer tomato, is that yeah. as big as, as it looks? Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's not, it's not the biggest tomato on the, the line, but, you know, I think it's the perfect size for that BLT, you know, one slice or one slice on your, on your, on your burger, and it's not going to be too big, it's not going to hang off the edge, it's going to be perfect right on top of the burger. Yummy. I wanted to thank you for such a thoughtful, thoughtful and thorough walkthrough of all of the 2023 varieties. Um, you're such a wealth of knowledge, um, and we appreciate everything you do for the brand um, and for finding all of these wonderful varieties, uh, bringing them to market. 
And I'm just wondering, Kevin, if you could just remind us, um, I think, you know, we all we all forget how long it takes to bring a, a plant to market. Could you remind us how long does it take to bring a Proven Winners Annual to market? Approximately? Right. Yeah. So once we get a plant into trial, you know, we it, it takes usually two years in our trial process to go through. So we'll screen it through for that consumer performance for the first year. And then what we'll do is we'll trial it a second year to make sure that it is. And then in that second year, we're concurrently running it through production trials. So running it through our system, running it through our uh, stock farm system to make sure that you know, there's no yield issues and that we're going to be able to reliably get it through our supply chain. So yeah, we by the time we get it, that's it's usually two years, two to three years to get it to market. And that's not counting, you know, all of the years of development, the many different breeders that put into that variety as well, too. So obviously they conceptualize what their, their goals that, that they want to breed. And so from that first cross to introduction, I would say it can be about five or six years for a new annual. Wow. Certainly brings a lot, of, a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of uh, hands moving through the process, right? Right. Yeah, Just exactly. to make sure that that it's a good garden performer um, in what we're looking for, right? Yeah, yeah. that's oh, the very first criteria. Great. Um, and Kevin, I often get questions um, uh, regarding the difference between super tunias and super bells. Um, other than the flower size, and obviously the vistas being so huge, um, I hear that uh, super tunias are, are better for, and I always respond, super tunias are better for the landscape, um, as well as large containers and, and color, but uh, uh, super bells are often better, stronger performers in strictly containers. Could you go in? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So super bells in all caliber color, they can struggle with um, with pHs that aren't I ideal. And so especially in, in certain areas in the country where the, the pH is extremely high. So if you plant a super bells in the ground, they can't tolerate that higher pH and then they can't take up iron. So then they'll look chlorotic and they don't look the best person. Petunias are a little bit more forgiving in that in that case. So they are much more idealistic or much more ideal for that landscape performance. And then super bells in that, that um, oilless media mixture that usually has a better pH for them. So then that's why that they look. That's really good information to know. And you also brought up vigor, which I think is really important, especially for grower retailers to pay attention to. Um, and, and definitely with plant pairing and putting those plants together in containers and in combination. So, um, and you can find that information on, on provenwinners.com. But um, Kevin, I know we're not supposed to have favorites. But do, <laughs> yeah, we're, do you have a favorite Proven Winners? <laughs> I, I, I do have a favorite Proven Winners. Uh, from, of the 23 items, obviously the mini vistas are, they've got a special place in my heart. They are just workhorses. And they work throughout through everybody's supply chain. They work great for the grower. They work great for the consumer. Um, and so... I think that they're just bulletproof varieties. I also really enjoyed the upside um, Sweet Carolines. Um, did I lose you? Uh oh. Oh, I lost the picture. I just want to make sure that I didn't get dropped off. No, okay. we're still here. Um, yeah. And so uh, I really enjoyed them. I think they make such a dramatic um, look within the garden center. And I, um, I really, really did enjoy them in my own garden this summer. That's wonderful to hear. I um, I want to thank you, Kevin, for taking the time. I, I don't see any other further questions um, that have come through. And you answered so many questions, um, especially in regards to, I, you know, I work with, with uh, retail growers down in the Southern market. And so I love the fact that we're paying attention to more of those varieties, like the, the, the luscious varieties through the lantanas and, and being that low, uh, seed set um, and making sure that we're, we're creating those solutions um, for consumers in that, in that area. So again, thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Heather. Yes. So I, I just want to take this time real quick to um, again, thank, thank Kevin uh, for taking the time to uh, share his genius. Um, we are so honored to have him um, on our team to be able to find all these great plants 
Um, and I also want to remind you of some upcoming webinars um, through uh, Proven Winners, and you can find all of all of the the. There's a few more that's left, so so don't hesitate to go on to provenwinners.com backslash IGC webinar series for um, the ones that are upcoming. But join us next Tuesday, November twenty second. Um, and this is this webinar is going to be a checklist to grow your business um, with Clint Aubin um, in the spring for 2023. So we're very excited to hear from Clint and what he has to share. Um, and so we hope 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 you'll all join us uh, for for next week for this. But um, on behalf of Jessica DeGraff and myself, we want to thank you again for joining uh, and also for your partnerships throughout the years. Um, and again, for all of this information and more, you can uh, find at provenwinners.com. And we hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you again. Thanks, everybody.